What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. I am so excited about today's episode and it's one that all of you have been asking about so I'm really excited to bring it to you guys. But first I want to mention just how incredible of a day it is today. Oh my goodness, it's 75 degrees, we got a slight breeze, it is just it's probably one of the best days of the year so far. So if, if you're not experiencing warm weather wherever you're at yet, let me just send you some good vibes. Just receive it right now and know that good weather is on its way, I promise you. If you're not having good weather yet, it's coming. Hang in there and before long you'll be out in the garden enjoying your, your, uh, your beautiful garden. So I hope you guys are having great weather wherever you're at though and, uh, and if you're not, you will be soon, I guarantee you. So what are we talking about in today's video? We are talking about male flowers on your squash, zucchini, pumpkin plants, cucumber plants, melon plants. My plants are only producing male flowers. Why? And is there anything I can do to fix it? Uh, this is a male flower. A lot of people see these and, uh, and they only see these and these don't give you fruit because these are male flowers. A male flower can be identified by a long flower stalk and no fruit at the bottom and a flower on top. A female flower this one here fell off, so I can use this as an example here. A female flower is seen by a flower at the top, the fruit at the bottom, and no flower stalk. It's just attached right to the plant there. And so that is what a female flower looks like. This is a good sign. This means you're getting fruit. However, many gardeners contact us and say, my plants are only producing male flowers. What's going on? I mean, this might even be mid-season. It might even be July or August when things are just producing like gangbusters and you're just thinking to yourself, what the heck's going on? I'm not, I, I can't get any fruit, any uh, fruit production out of my plants. They're only producing male flowers. What's going on? So I want to tackle the why does this happen? And I want to tackle the what can you do about it? Because those are the two questions we get asked primarily. So I first want to talk about kind of why does this happen? The first reason why this happens is often the plants are not mature enough. Right now, our plants are quite small. You can see there. They're only about two months old. They're very, they're very young in the large scope of squash plants. Um, we just started them by seed maybe about five weeks ago or so, six weeks ago, really not that long ago. And, uh, and so, you know, they're just getting started. And that's why you know, oftentimes when a plant is really young, it'll kind of just send out some, some test flowers, we like to call them. Those are male flowers because they don't take a lot of energy to push male flowers. When it takes, uh, it takes a lot of energy to produce female flowers, but it takes very little energy to produce a male flower. That's why typically there's around, on average, about eight to nine male flowers for every female flower that's produced. And that's because uh, it also increases the pollen count because it takes a male flower and a female flower to make, uh, to make viable fruit, but that female flower has to be touched by enough pollen to make it viable. So if there was a one-to-one -one ratio it really would not be a great, uh, there would not be a great odds that there'd be enough uh, of a robust pollen count out there to pollinate all the fruits in existence. And you'd lose a lot of fruits that way. Because what happens when a female, uh, female flower is not pollinated, this will open up, and it only has about 24 hours, maybe 48 hours at most, before this flower begins to uh, wither away. And whatever pollen has touched the anthers is all that, uh, all that pollinates this fruit. And if you've ever had a fruit fall off and kind of look like it's gonna produce and then it kind of just shrivels up and falls away, it's called blossom end rot and that's usually caused from poor pollination on your zucchinis. And, uh, and so, you know, that's why there, there typically is more male flowers than female flowers. But in the beginning, because it takes so little energy to push them out, generally it's kind of, uh, it's almost like for lack of a better example, the plant's kind of coming into puberty, if you will. It's starting to mature, it's starting to get ready to reproduce, but it can't reproduce yet uh, fully, but it can kind of try its hand at it, you know what I mean? Maybe just produce a few, few, uh, few male flowers. And that's typically what you'll see in the beginning, in the early season, you know, late May, early June, mid-June, you'll see a lot of male flowers. And so sometimes patience is just the biggest thing that you're, you're, you're not patient enough and eventually the plant will produce some, uh, some female flowers. The second reason why plants will only produce male flowers is because of a lack of nutrients. Because it takes a lot more energy and a lot more nutrients to push a female flower out, sometimes what the plants will do is they'll flower, they'll basically in a last ditch effort to survive, they'll push a male flower out in hopes that somewhere around here there's a female flower that they can uh, pollinate with, in hopes that the genetic diversity from this plant will be transferred over to another plant. It's almost like 
uh, just a very latch, last ditch effort if it's very stressed. So sometimes if you see a lot of yellowing on your plant, what can happen is it can only produce male flowers because it just doesn't have the energy to produce a female flower. The third reason why plants will only produce male flowers is because of a lack of sun. This is a really incredible concept, but it actually is very true. What happens when there's a lack of sun, the plants will go through their natural reproductive cycle and they'll simply keep flowering like they always would. But something happens in a lack of sunlight. If they don't have enough sun, they know that the sun cannot touch the flowers, meaning that the color of the flower won't be seen by pollinators. And so even though it's reached maturity stage and it knows that it's time to produce flowers, it's actually much like a chicken. So with a chicken, if you have a female chicken, it's a very loose example, but it's very much the same in that a female chicken will always lay eggs, but if there's nothing to pollinate those eggs, it's just an egg. And so there's no, it's not a fertilized egg. It's very much the same with your zucchinis. If they're in the shade, there's no bees or, or any pollinators. They're gonna see those flowers. So if they don't get enough sun, it's actually, again, one of those things where it'll mature, it'll become maturing age, it'll be ready to uh, lay an egg or put out a female flower, if you will, but because it knows that there's not enough chances for that flower to be seen because of just the amount of uh, sunlight that it's getting, it only push out male flowers because there's no point in, uh, there's no point in putting out a, a flower that's not going to be pollinated. And so that can typically be seen in plants that are getting about five hours or less of sun. There's enough sunlight to maybe keep them alive and survive, but not enough sunlight for them to feel confident putting out a female flower. So you'll see far more, far more male flowers produced in plants that get uh, some, some shade during the day. And that's why full sun is always great for zucchinis and squashes and things like that because, um, because they do react to that sunlight. Really incredible actually, really, really incredible how smart plants are, just so fascinating. And then the fourth reason why they do not produce female flowers is because of stress or a lack of, uh, basically a lack of um, uh, proper, proper living conditions. So we kind of talked about this with nutrients, we kind of talked about this with sunlight, but this also applies to other stressors as well. If the plant is stressed because of say temperature or lack of water, these are two kind of exterior pressures that uh, can be put on the plant that will prevent um, uh, female plant, female flower from being produced. That's a mouthful there. Uh, so, so if the temperatures are too high or too low, a female flower won't be produced because if it's too low, chances are uh, there's a good chance of rot and, and mildews. And so the plant's just kind of waiting for the soil to kind of warm up before it produces again. Also, when it's cold, the plant knows that there's far less pollinators out there because they don't like warm weather, or they don't like cold weather. Bees just don't come out during cold weather because they need warm weather to survive. So uh, they're, when it's cold and rainy and stuff like that, the, the, the bees are out and they're, they're actually in their colony staying warm. If it's too hot, same can happen. Uh, you know, the, the pollen can actually become ruined if the temperatures are too high. And this means that the pollen that's produced won't create a fertile cross anyways. So the plant's not going to produce that, uh, the plant's not gonna produce the fruit because chances are any pollen that is in existence will be already ruined. And this can be temperatures over about 90 to 95 degrees or higher in that case. If the plant's just stressed, it just won't produce the female flowers. Uh, same thing with water. If there's not enough water in the soil and the plant is really dehydrated, there's a lot of water that's required to produce a female, a fully ripe female fruit. And so you have a case where it's not, it doesn't have water to really stay alive. So why is it gonna produce fruit on top of that, which requires 90 to 95% water content to produce that fruit. So uh, generally, if the plant's really uh, stressed for water, it won't produce those female flowers either. So those are kind of the reasons you look at why a plant is not producing female flowers and is only producing male flowers. So that's kind of the why, what can you do about it? Well, we talked about kind of a few reasons why they don't. So we'll talk about a few reasons, what you, you know, a few uh, things you can do based on those reasons. The first one is fertilize. If your plant looks like it's yellow, we got a yellow one here, we've had a lot of rain. so. There's no doubt in my mind that that's probably lacking a little bit of uh, nitrogen there. It's got a little bit of a yellow color there. Nice dark green, little little lighter yellow on this one. They could probably use some nitrogen. Give them a little bit of uh, blood meal. Give them a little bit of fish fertilizer. We use Trifecta Plus on all of our plants here. And so 
we'll probably come back and just top dress a little bit of trifecta around the base of the plant there and it should be fine. Um, so give it a little nitrogen and chances are in a couple weeks you'll start to see some flower activity happening again. Second thing is water. If it's stressed because of a lack of water, just simply give it a little more water. The plant will naturally become less stressed and it'll feel like you can put out some female flowers without risking dying. So it'll start pushing out the female flowers that way. The third way that you can increase the chances of female flowers is by using shade cloth. So again, when it's too hot out, put some shade cloth on because if it's, uh, if it's too hot, the shade cloth will cut down on the amount of solar energy coming from the sun. And we talked about how plants don't like to be in the shade completely, I get that, but this isn't too much shade. If they're in full sun and it's super, super hot, sometimes protecting them from some of that heat is far better than the, you know, it's far, uh, the sun is far worse than the shade, I should say. So you're kind of picking the lesser of two evils at that point. Putting some shade cloth over it's going to protect the plants. Also, if it's too cold, put some plastic over top of them. Um, we, you know, we talked about how we use a hoop house in early spring. If you're someone that's getting some cold weather and there's a couple weeks of cold weather, get a cold frame, or not a cold frame, but a little hoop house over top, a little caterpillar tunnel or something like that with some greenhouse plastic, warm them up or just wait until the weather warms up. You can do that too, but that's something you can do. And then the final way that you can help increase female flowers is by one way, and that's by plucking the, me the male flowers. You see what happens when a, when a uh, male flower is plucked, it actually sends down a reaction to the plant that says, okay, I need to do some more growing, I need to do some more maturing, and what'll happen is it'll actually send uh, usually a few more flowers after you pluck a couple more of those male flowers. And like I said, there's typically about eight male flowers to every female flower. And so if you've plucked a few of the male flowers off, there's a higher probability that that plant's going to produce that next female flower. It just might not be around to it yet. So every eight flowers, it says, okay, I'll put out a female flower. And then it kind of goes through that. But if it's got a lot of male flowers already, it's not encouraged to really produce a whole lot more uh, female flowers if there's so many flowers already blooming. So pluck off a few of those male flowers, let it produce some more flowers. Some of those might be uh, female flowers. And if the plant looks really healthy, chances are it's only a matter of time before one produces. So that's the other thing as well as, I guess, just wait, <laughs> patience. Like I said, sometimes patience is the hardest thing as gardeners. You know, we talk about all the time how patience is um, a gardener's best trait. Well, I'm a gardener by heart. I know a lot of you are, and I'm one of the most impatient people I know. <laughs> I'm so impatient. I'm like, I'm like screaming at my strawberries. I'm like, ripen today. <laughs> So, so trust me, I know the feeling of just wanting it now, that instant gratification, but know that everything good comes with time. You just gotta be patient and know that it'll happen. So there's how you can help your plant produce more female flowers and why they're only producing male flowers. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. I hope you found this informative. And if you did, make sure to throw a like up there. It really helps this video. And also make sure to share with your friends. I know this is a big topic that a lot of gardeners talk about. Share this video with your friends because I just have not seen this information out there enough. And I think it'll be really important to, uh, to help people out, get them the information they need. So I'd appreciate that. And if you have not yet subscribed, make sure to do that. Now that the warm weather's here, we're gonna be out here every single day, loving life, sharing the world of gardening to you, and uh, just having a lot of fun with it. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. And as always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel, reminding you to grow big or go home. We'll catch y'all later. See ya, bye.